Hey there, it's Mark from Men Who Bullet. Thanks so much for checking out today's video where we're going to be doing a plan with me. And I wanted to do this one today because I got a question not long ago online and someone said, Mark, where do you get the inspiration from? Like, how do you come up with these ideas to make inside of your bullet journal? And what I told them was my inspiration kind of comes from everywhere. I get inspiration from people online. I've gotten inspiration from a shampoo bottle before. I also get inspiration by the things around me, especially on my desk, we've got a lot of stuff. And this week's inspiration actually came from this metal stencil. I was trying to think about what I was gonna create inside of here. And on this metal stencil, there's a really cool tab looking cutout here. And I thought, you know what would be really cool? if I made a spread that kind of looked like a folder using these tabs. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna set up a tabbed weekly spread Monday through Friday, as well as leaving room for tasks. And I've recently been losing emails a little bit. I get a lot of them during the day. So we're also going to make an email back section using some cool stickers from Dolce Planner. If you're interested in picking up anything that you see inside of this video today, I'm going to link all of the products in the descriptions below. Make sure that you check those out. So let's go ahead and get started setting up our weekly spread using a stencil. So let's go over our supplies for this video today. We need a notebook. This is the Archer and Olive Square Dot Grid Notebook. I also have my metal stencils here. I'll drop a link in the descriptions below to my Amazon store so you can pick that up if you wanna get it for yourself. I also use a pencil for this spread. These are from Mr. Pen. They were cool enough and sent over a whole collection of cool supplies, including this pen set, which has every size imaginable that you might want. It starts very small in line point all the way up to a two, which is pretty incredible. Not only did you get the pens, but you also get the replacement leads for these and all of the sizes and you get extra erasers, which you can pop on the back. They also sent over fine liners. So for this spread specifically, I'm gonna work with two different sizes. I'm gonna go with a very fine point, 005. And then for some of my other thicker lines, I'm going to use the 03. And the last thing we're gonna use is gonna be a gray marker. So this is one of my very well-used Tombow gray dual tip pens, which we'll be using for extra shadows. So let's go ahead and open up the notebook. I've already penciled everything in, but my approach for this week is going to be pretty straightforward. I have six columns total, three on the left, three on the right-hand side. We'll do Monday through Friday with space on the right-hand side for task, and then I have a space down here for my calendar. Now, to figure out the full spacing, what I did is went back to my resource grid page that I've built out in this bullet journal, so helpful, and I'm going to use this three column here. So it's 11 spaces with one space in between each. And what I've done is I've come back, I just drew a straight line across each of these spaces, all the way across, and then what I did starting over on the left-hand side of each of those is went in with that tab stencil to create that overlap. Now, when I drew my vertical lines down, I wanted to get a little bit of that curve to make it look like a manila folder, so I just used the edge of the stencil here to get that extra curve. Now, for this calendar down over here, I used a different edge to get that space, but when I go over this, I'm actually going to use the corner of this one. It just has a little bit of a tighter angle here versus more of like that overall circular one. I like the way that looks a lot better. Now that we have everything laid out here, I'm gonna go ahead and ink in the page. So I'm going to use the 03 fine liner. So it's a good medium size to fill out the rest of this page here, going over all of my lines that I have here in pencil first. While these metal stencils are great, they're not perfect because you can't really see through them, but that's totally okay. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect as we go across. You just wanna make sure that you're getting as close to your line as possible. And if it doesn't quite touch, it's okay. We can always come in and touch it up towards the end and add in those final little details. Now that all of my tabs are drawn in here, I'm going to use the edge of the stencil to draw all of the curves on the left and right hand side. Now, as you see here, it's just really important. Make sure that you're not going too close to the edge because you wanna make sure that you have enough space for the right hand side when you go back over top of it. If you go all the way to the edge with that straight line, you're not going to get that curve. So just give yourself a little bit of extra space there. Because this is a wider stencil, you have plenty of room to move over and get that straight line along with the curve as you go down the edge. 
I always talk about the importance of using a pencil first, and this is a really great example why. When I first drew this rounded square, I drew it with really, really large corners, and I wanted to close it up and make it a bit tighter. So because I worked in pencil first, I can make that decision now that I've seen everything put together. Now that we've inked in the full entire page, I'll go back over top of this with my eraser. This will also help me, just in case I didn't connect any of my lines, it'll really show me where I just need to go over with a slight detail with that pen again, just to make sure that I've connected all the lines I need to. So as you can see here, there's just a few spaces where there's some gaps where the edge of that stencil didn't quite touch the end of these boxes. I'm just gonna draw a straight line down to connect the vertical to the horizontal line here to give it that full folder look. Now that I've inked everything in, we're gonna go in with a little bit of a detail here for the shadow. So I'm going to use this light gray Tombow pen to color in each of these tabs. I've mentioned in previous videos that I like using this light gray one because you can add layers on top to make the gray darker and darker. If I went straight in with a dark gray, I might not like it too much and I'm kind of stuck with it, but the light gray lets you go in and make those decisions yourself one layer at a time. That's a good first layer, but I wanna add a little bit more of that shadow and dimension to these folders. So I'm actually gonna go over this one more time right now. I know that I want to create a little bit more of that dimension between the tab and the folder. And I think I can go another layer on here just to make it a little bit darker to really bring those two apart to make it look like it's an open folder. Now, I didn't mention this in my supplies part of this video because I just made this decision right now is that I'm going to add some stickers to the bottom corner of this. So I recently just invested inside of one of these portfolio booklets that has the clear insert pages. And this is how I'm organizing my stickers now. So all of the stickers I have are here. I can see them. I don't have to shuffle through them. Instead of drawing it, I really like the option of also using stickers. If you're not great at little doodles, I'm actually going to use this little email sticker here from Dolce Planner. This is where I'm going to put my reminders of people that I need to email back. I've been finding it harder and harder. I've tried flagging them in my email. I've tried writing them down in other places. And sometimes I just forget that I need to email people back. So anyone I need to email kind of right as I'm thinking about it, I'm gonna write it in this section. Now we're gonna go ahead and title all of our folders here with the days of the week and the headers, and then we'll also fill in the calendar here in the bottom right-hand side. So to do this, I'm going to use the very fine point zero zero five fine liner here to fill these in. So let's go ahead and draw in the calendar here. Now, one of the tips that I've learned over time, especially with calendars, is that you don't have to fill every single number in. What I've been doing recently is starting at the beginning of the month, whatever day that is, sometimes it starts on a Tuesday or a Thursday, and working across to the edge. So because this month starts on a Friday, I'll fill in Friday, Saturday, and then what I do is just go down to the numbers on Saturday and Sunday. So I'm starting my week with a certain number and ending it, and that way everything in between should make sense. I'm gonna add one more detail here and just highlight in the week that I'm in. So these are actually really cool gel highlighters that I also got from Mr. Pen that they gifted me. And I've never used a gel highlighter before. I've used a highlighter pencil, but these are totally new to me. So incredibly cool. It's weird, it almost looks transparent yellow, but let's go ahead and put this on the paper to see what it looks like. I don't know what to really expect from these. So it says that it's acid free, no bleed on any paper, including magazines and Bibles, no smearing across any ink, that's huge. And then we also have all of these colors here. It goes on almost like a crayon, but even smoother than that. That's, that's really neat. All right, so here is the entire week that we're looking at. We've got our Monday through Friday look here, including our tasks over on the right hand side. We've got our email back section in the bottom left-hand corner, as well as our calendar here to let us know where we are during the week. I hope that you enjoyed making this along with me. I am up and ready to go for my week. Don't forget, if you want to check out any of the products that you saw in today's video, you can check out the links to all of them in the descriptions below. Just to let you know, all of them are affiliate links, either to Archer and Olive, which I'm an affiliate of, or to my Amazon store. Just know that if you click on any of those links, you're actually supporting me and my channel. I get a 
little bit of a kickback if you buy anything from any of those links. So I appreciate you definitely supporting me and uh, this channel as we go through. Thanks again for checking out everything today. I'm going to leave some videos at the end of this video around other ideas that you can create inside of your own bullet journal if you're interested. As you know, I am so much focused on functionality but adding some of the fun inside of there as well. So I've got an entire collection and playlist for you to check out, as well as some other really cool videos. So I'll drop them all here at the end. Thanks again so much for checking everything out. Don't forget, you can also follow me on my other social medias, Facebook, Instagram, and of course, always here on YouTube at Men Who Bullet. And you can also check out my online blog, menwhobullet.com. Have a great rest of your weekend, and I will talk to you very soon. See ya.